On this episode of Motoring Box, we're going to be installing a dash cam. Welcome back to Motoring Box, I'm Sean McCallum and today I'm going to show you how you can install a dash cam. Now this has been done before tens of thousands of times on YouTube already. But I'm going to show you what I think is arguably one of the best value dash cams you can buy. Because the problem with dash cams is you can actually go too cheap with it. If you spend under 100 Australian dollars, you're arguably going to end up with a piece of poo. But from there, the sky's the limit. You can go up to over a thousand dollars, I believe. But to get a quality dash cam, I don't think you need to go anywhere near that price tag. Because I'm going to introduce to you the DD Pi Mini 3. Now, I've never actually heard of this brand before, but I actually installed a DD Pi Mini 2 into my NC Fairlane in I think around 2017. So in the four years that I owned that car, that camera performed flawlessly. It had really good image quality. It was a 1080p camera. But the footage that it generated was amazing for the price tag. It cost me about 130 bucks for that camera. The DD Pi Mini 3 cost me $156, but that is actually really good value for money because in that price, it included a hard wiring kit. And that just lets you literally hardwire the camera into your car and not have to use one of those cigarette lighter plug adapters to power the thing. So it allows for a neater installation and I don't think there's any camera on the market, correct me if I'm wrong, which can perform as good as this one for that price tag. It has 32 gigs, I believe, of onboard memory as well, so you don't even need to get a memory card or anything for this. You literally plug it in, set it up, and off it goes. So as far as a fairly cheap 1080p good quality camera goes, I reckon this is the one. And I'll show you later on the footage after we install it. And it also has a really awesome app which you can load onto iOS or Android devices. You can then connect via Wi-Fi Direct and download clips straight away within a matter of seconds. So that's really it. We can talk a bit more about it as we install it. But let's get this thing into my BA Falcon XR6 Turbo, get it all installed, and then we'll take it for a drive and see how it performs. All right, so to begin with, I am going to utilize the included cigarette lighter adapter because that's going to help me turn the camera on, confirm that it works, but also help me aim it in the right direction while we mount it on the windscreen up here behind the rear vision mirror. And if you want to take the easy route, this is actually a way you can install it permanently if you want to. The only downside is you are going to have this little cigarette lighter adapter plugged into your little cigarette lighter plug down there on the bottom of your dash. And you can run the cabling sort of behind the trim pieces so you can't actually see that. But uh, I like to go for a far neater installation. In all three of the cars that I've installed dash cams into, I've actually hardwired them like we're going to do today. And we simply need to plug that into our power source. So if we turn our ignition on, we can then plug the other end into our camera. Nice and easy, we'll peel the little protective layer off <laughs> and the camera will say hello. So to confirm that this thing is working properly, you actually need to download the DDPi app. So I'm just going to hit record on my phone screen so you can see it. And I'm going to launch the DDPi app. Now this is actually a really impressive app when you consider how dodgy mostly some of these sort of cheap apps are, but this one is actually pretty amazing. You can actually see it's got my AU Falcons camera set up, so we should be able to add a new device. It's a no screen dash cam, and that's typically how you would install it. You tuck the wiring up behind the roof trim here, down behind the panels under the dash to the cigarette lighter, but it is powered on. We need to connect to the Wi-Fi. We should find a DDPi Mini 3, there it is. Now, what is the password? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Connect. So we are now connected. We've switched back to the app. We'll say connect to Wi-Fi. It's now saying it's initializing, connecting to the camera. And we should have a shot here of the dashboard. There we go. And there's the camera. There's you guys sitting out there. So it's giving me uh, some vanishing line references. So in theory, I probably should be parked outside. But uh, look, I've done this on more than one occasion, so I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> so uh, look, it's really cool because it does give you an idea of how it's going to look. Uh, but yeah, I like to tuck these up basically behind the rear vision mirror, just to the left of it. So that when you're sitting here on the right side and you look at your mirror, you can almost hide the entire camera behind sort of this half of the mirror. But yeah, I do recommend if you've never installed a dash cam before, probably 
do this step out on the street somewhere where you can actually see off to the horizon a little bit and that'll really help you aim it perfectly. But in my experience, because this thing is adjustable vertically with this little, it can basically spin in its little housing here, you really just need to make sure that sideways wise, it's actually aimed straight and then you can adjust the vertical one a bit later. So as long as you're pretty close, I'm gonna hold this up basically where it is and I'm gonna twist the camera up a little bit. So what I'm looking at here is that gap between the red cabinets and the workbench on the side. That is basically the center as far as I can see by eye. So I'm gonna line up the front line with that gap. And then I'm basically gonna try and stick this right about there. There we go. With the camera in my AU Fairmont and also the NC Fairlane back in the day, I didn't have any issues with uh, the camera coming unstuck. It was a really good solid mount. And in particular, when I sold the NC Fairlane, I actually took the DD Pi Mini 2 camera out of it and that put up a really big fight to get it off. So it's really good quality tape. And yeah, it's not gonna come off anytime soon. As long as your glass is clean, as long as you put a bit of pressure on here just to get it set on. So you're yeah, looking at our phone. I think that is a pretty good match. You are going to see a little bit more of the left side just because it is offset a little bit. But when you're driving, it is a nice wide angle of view. So as long as you get it fairly close to the center on that front line there, you should be sweet. And this app is really awesome because you can hit the capture button to take a screenshot basically, or you can scrub back on the timeline to earlier and it'll start playing from there. And then basically, once you've found the spot you want, you can actually hit download and it'll start recording from that point onwards until you tell it you're done. So that in particular is a really cool feature. If you've had something happen on the road, which I have, when you get to your destination, simply connect to the Wi-Fi, scrub back to where the incident actually happened and you can have the footage downloaded within a minute. It's dead set, simple and fast. So yeah, don't just leave your camera installed like this. I've seen plenty of people do that and there's really no excuse for this level of laziness. Some people will just sort of tuck the wires down here out of the way and go, yeah, I'm completely happy with this. And when you realize how simple it is to actually install this wiring properly, whether you've got a hard wire or you're actually using this USB cigarette lighter adapter, it is dead set simple to install this properly. And when you realize how simple it is, you're gonna kick yourself. If you've got a camera like this, keep watching because I'll show you how to fix it. So now we can move on with the rest of the hard wiring installation. As I mentioned, if you wanna stick with the cigarette light or adapter, just tuck your wiring in as I'm gonna show you. They include little fuse connectors actually, which might be a really cool way to do it. And I typically wouldn't use these, but I'm actually tempted now because they look pretty good. Basically these replace one of the fuses in your fuse box and then they have an additional two fuse connectors here on the top. So you can take out one of your fuses, which is say powered all the time, plug it into the back here and then plug this in to where that fuse was located. So I reckon that might actually be the way to go. That's going to be dead set simple. So let's pull the power out of this. You can turn that sound off, thank God as well. <laughs> so look, that is probably the only negative of the camera, but you can turn it down or you can turn it off. So we'll plug in the wire for our hard wiring kit. And then rather generously, they actually provided this little trim removal tool piece and what you can do is use that to tuck this wire in up behind your roof lining. So you want to take the shortest path possible. So you can sort of lever the trim away from the glass and then you can start pushing this thing in. And then once you get it going, you can pretty much just keep it going by pushing it in as you go. It's really fast, as I mentioned, if you're using the cigarette lighter adapter, you just have to do exactly the same thing. And you can actually get a really neat installation in probably about 10 minutes. All right, now we've gotten here to the corner. Some of you probably think it's going to get a bit more difficult, but it doesn't have to be because you simply have to pull away your rubber trim and pull the A-pillar trim just a little bit away at the top. You don't have to pop the whole thing off. And then you just need to make sure that it's neatly sort of disappearing in behind that pillar. Bring it through here to the other side. And then you can pop your A-pillar trim, which I'll have to clean as well, back on. And then from there, you can simply run it down the side here. And that is like more than half of the job done. Pretty simple. So bring you guys around and we'll continue the installation. All right, so here we have our wire coming out the bottom of the A-pillar trim. And really, we just have to continue having it hidden in here behind the rubber seal, which is rather simple. You just pull the seal out a little bit, poke the wire in, 
and then put the seal down over the top. So that'll get you all the way down here to the bottom of the fuse box. And that today is where we're actually going to be hooking into our power. So now we just have the issue of finding which fuse to use. And we do need to find a ground as well, but that should be a fairly simple thing to do. So I've actually found the diagram and I will save it and put it in the video. Two different power wires we wanna hook up. The red one is actually constant power all the time. And then the yellow one is accessory power. So you wanna hook it into something which is only powered when the accessories or when the key is turned. And the prime candidate for that one is actually this green fuse right here on the end. It's the 30 amp fuse for the cigarette lighter plug. So that was really where I was going to hook this in anyway. So uh, let's hook it into that spot there, shall we? And as I mentioned, this little adapter piece does let you plug the existing fuse into the top of it. And then you can just plug this back into where that existing fuse came from. So yeah, that's a pretty neat solution and it won't cause any problems for the life of the camera. So for the next fuse, I'm just gonna locate one that's hopefully on all the time. I did just try the hazard switch and they do work with the ignition off. So fuse number 17 there, the hazard one, is going to be the one you want. So I've just neatened this installation up a little bit. I am going to tuck these wires through this little hole here and that will help us keep the fuse panel here nice and neat. So now we just have the ground which we need to find a connection for, which shouldn't hopefully be too difficult. So for the ground, I've actually decided to use a bolt. You'll just be able to see it down here to the side. So we just need to back that bolt out a little bit, slip this little C connector, whatever you call it, underneath it, tighten it back down and the installation should be done. Now, because this might be grounding for the entire fuse box, I'm not really sure. I have disconnected the battery before I've started messing around with it. So I'm not gonna back that bolt out all the way, just enough. And look, it's not the neatest installation in the world, but it's not going to stop this cover from going back on. And when you consider the difference between doing this or hacking up your car's wiring loom somewhere, I think this is a really good solution. Okay guys, so we're out here on the road and we're testing our DDPi Mini 3 camera. And have a look at this FG Falcon XT in front of us. You can see him nice and clearly. The video quality is also fairly sharp if you compare it to my GoPro Max. Here's a look out the front from the GoPro. And then here's a look out the front from the DDPi Mini 3. So this is why I think these cameras are amazing for the money. So when you're talking about dash cams in the $100 to $200 range, I think it's a really difficult proposition to go past this camera. There are cameras you can buy locally from super cheap auto and things like that that are in a similar range, but this one, in my opinion, blows all of them out of the water. It's just a really good quality cam and sure, it doesn't have a screen on it, but that app, it's absolutely amazing. I love it. Simple to use, robust, amazing. So for the price point, I don't know how they do it. Sure, it's not 4K, but do you really need 4K? And is 4K going to put more load on the camera? Is the camera gonna last as long? Is it going to be as reliable? These are all unknown questions. So look, I'm really in love with this camera. I think it's amazing. I can wholeheartedly recommend it. I am not being sponsored by them. I bought this camera retail. There is no deal in place. It is simply a camera that I'm recommending to you guys because I've had a lot of experience with them and I think they are very good value for money. So that's it guys, we'll wrap this one up as we pop back onto the Ipswich motorway. I really hope you found this video to be useful and uh, look, installing a dash cam doesn't have to be difficult. So keep it simple. Do look up the DDPi Mini 3 series if you're interested in getting a really good value dash cam for the money. And yeah, you can't go wrong. So thank you very much for watching guys. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. Something's sliding in my dash. <laughs>